Hi guys, I hope you are fine. And in this video, we are going to be discussing about the severity of the tissue injury. So as you know, the severity of the tissue injury includes the three grades. So here we have the grade one, which is also known as first degree. And here we have the mild pain. Then we have the grade two, which is the second degree. And here we have the moderate pain. Then the grade three, which is the third grade, there is severe pain. Now let's discuss each grade individually so here we have the grade one in the grade one as we have discussed it there is only a mild pain and this pain occurs at the time of the injury or within first 24 hours then uh, here we also have a mild swelling and there is local tenderness but there is no tear and this is also a very important point that in the grade one we have the mild pain and there is no tear now we have the grade two so in the grade two we have a moderate pain and it is uh, such level of the pain that it requires the stopping of the activity. And this pain can increase with the stress and the palpation. And if there is injury of the ligaments, so definitely as you know that the ligaments are responsible for joining the bone with the bone. So if there is tearing of the few fibers of the ligament, so this would increase the joint mobility because of the less degree or the slight degree of the instability of the joint. Okay, so key points in the grade 2 are moderate pain and there is a tearing of the few fibers. Then we have the grade 3 in which there is severe pain and this pain increases with the palpation but not with the stress. Now here in the grade 3 there is near complete or complete tear or avulsion of the tendon or the ligaments. It means that very few fibers would be intact and most of them would be torn up. And definitely if there is a complete or the near complete tear of the ligament, so this would result in the instability of the joint. Now we have a next topic and that is irritability of the tissues. And here we are going to discuss about the stages of inflammation and repair. So what we must keep in mind is that after any insult to the connective tissue, so there is similar vascular and the cellular response. And these responses contribute to the tissue irritability and the sensitivity. Now, in the tissue irritability or in the sensitivity, basically we characterize this in the three stages. So the first stage is inflammation. Then we have repair. And then repairing would later progress into the maturation and remodeling. So now in the inflammation, as you know, there are two types of inflammation. One is acute inflammation and the other one is the chronic inflammation. And the acute inflammation has the following stages. In the acute inflammation, we have the acute stage, the subacute stage, and the chronic stage. It means that all of these stages, the inflammation would be there in the acute inflammation. And then uh, with the passage of time, it would get repaired. And then further later on, it would be remodeled and there is maturation. Now in the chronic inflammation, we also can observe these stages but it would be possible only if the stimulus that was causing this chronic inflammation has ceased. Now let's discuss about the stages of acute inflammation. So here you can see we have the three stages, the acute stage, subacute stage and the chronic stage. The acute stage is also known as a reaction or inflammatory stage because there is reaction and then the inflammation starts. There, then we have the subacute stage. In the subacute stage, it is also known as the proliferation, repair, and healing. Why? Because the healing occurs. Then we have the chronic stage. Here, there is maturation and remodeling. Now, let's discuss each stage one by one. Now, here in the acute stage, in the acute stage, we have the inflammation as well as the pain, and the pain is even also present at the rest. Now, as there is pain, so this will result in the muscle guarding, and because of the muscle guarding, completion of the range of motion is not possible. Now both the pain and the impaired movement it is because of the altered chemical state because this altered chemical state would irritate the nerve endings in this way this would cause the pain and this would increase the tissue tension why because of the effusion and edema so the tissue tension would increase as well as there is the muscle guarding because of the pain so these are all the things that are contributing to the pain as well as the impaired movement and this stage lasts four to six days unless the insult is perpetuated now let's discuss this stage from the book as well so this table is very important so here we have the acute stage and which is also known as inflammation and here you can see the tissue responses and characteristics are the vascular changes, 
and definitely because of the vascular changes there is exudation of the cells and the chemicals would also leak out from the vessels and this can also result in the ves in the clot formation then there is also the phagocytosis by the cells that have leaked out of the blood vessels and this would cause the neutralization of the irritants and there is early fibroblastic activity then the clinical signs so as we have discussed earlier there is inflammation as well as the pain and the pain is before the tissue resistance and to discuss this thing let us see this diagram so here you can see that this is basically the acute stage and here this area is the range of motion and this area is the tissue resistance so here you can see in the acute stage we have the pain that is occurring when performing the normal range of motion so in this area you can see the pain then in the early subacute as you can see here that there would be a pain when the tissue is stressed in the tissue resistance then in the late subacute and in the chronic stage what you can see is that uh, there would be a pain at the end of the tissue resistance now let's see what can be the goals of the physiotherapy and the interventions for the phases of the rehabilitation so here in the acute stage we are going to be employing the phase 1 and that is the maximum protection and here what can be the goals of the physical therapy here is that the control of the inflammation because as uh, there is inflammation in this stage that is why we would control the inflammation by the rise phenomenon as you know uh, the rise means r for the rest i for the ice c for compression and the e for elevation so we are going to uh, do the selective rest ice icing compression and elevation then our next goal would be to prevent the deleterious effects of the rest and as you can see here that we were um applying the rest in this stage so this can also result in the deleterious effects so in order to prevent the deleterious effects of the rest what we can do the non destructive movements and non destructive movements are basically the passive range of motion we have the massage and the muscle setting with the caution Okay guys I hope this video was informative for you all and in the next video we are going to be discussing about the other stages which are left uh, the subacute stage chronic stage and we will also discuss about the chronic inflammation and the chronic pain syndrome so see you in the next video thank you